everyone. I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to crochet the Jacob's Ladder Stitch which you can see a swatch of here in front of you. Here I've worked my ladder stitch in three different colors. You can uh, work it in a solid stitch or add as many different colors as you would like. Today I'll be working with three. Now the Jacob's Ladder Stitch, it is an easy stitch to work. It's very fun. It looks like it has this braid laying over top of your rows of double crochet stitches. This is the front side and then this is the back side. It is worked in a unique way so the foundation part of the fabric is worked and, uh, and then you'll see we will uh, braid or uh, kind of crochet this top chain together at the very end. So it's quite a neat stitch to work. It's fun and uh, we're going to tackle it today. So thank you so much for joining me and today in the tutorial I'm going to be using the Karen Times Pantone Yarn by Yarnspirations as well as a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. Links for both of these items you can find in the description of the video. Also in the description you will find a direct link to the free written and photo tutorial uh, for this Jacob's Ladder Stitch. So thank you so much for joining me. While you're here don't forget to take a look around and uh, feel free to subscribe. This channel is updated weekly with stitch tutorials and crochet patterns. For our stitch tutorial today uh, we are going to start by making a foundation chain and our foundation chain needs to have a multiple of five plus two stitches so today I'm going to chain a total of 22 there's 20 and 22. Once you have your desired foundation chain, you're going to begin by working one double crochet stitch into the fourth chain from your hook. So count in one, two, three, four. Into that fourth chain, work one double crochet. You're then going to double crochet into each of the next three stitches. Your chain three at the beginning will count as a stitch. So double crochet into each of the next three stitches and you will have a total of five stitches worked including that chain three. We're then going to work a chain and so you're going to chain ten chains. So just out of the top of that last stitch, chain one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And this is going to form the first loop of that chain that we're going to work over top of our of our yarn. So then you're going to, once you have your uh, ten chains worked, you're going to bring your hook down and just slip stitch into this top of your stitch. Now when I slip stitch into the top of my stitch I like to work under the front loop only from top through to bottom and then under the next uh, vertical bar there of the post. So I'm just working through those two loops yarning over and completing my slip stitch. You'll then have one uh, chain 10 loop here. We're then going to continue working double crochet stitches across and you're going to double crochet into each of the next five stitches. There's one, two, three, four, and five and you're going to chain ten. Now 
Once you've chained 10, you're going to come back down into the top at the base of that chain into the top of your double crochet and work one slip stitch to form a ring. And you're then going to repeat that all the way across. So double crochet into each of the next five stitches. chain 10 and slip stitch down into your base of your chain. Repeat that all the way across to your final five uh, chain stitches and then work one double crochet in each of the final five stitches. Chain 1 and turn your work. Once you've chained one and turned your work, you're then going to work one single crochet into each stitch all the way across, including the top of that fifth double crochet where you've worked uh, that chain. So there's one, two, three, four into that fifth one work a, a single crochet, push your stitches forward if you need to, and then work your next single crochet into the top. You're going to want your loops to always fall onto the same side of your fabric, so just make sure that you're always pushing them into the same direction. So here I'm going to push my loop forward, jump across here behind, and single crochet just into the top of the stitch. So continue that all the way across. When you come to your final stitch, if you would like to change color, then at that time you can change color. I'm going to work my way across here and then I'm going to show you how I like to change color in a project. And this also works for adding a new ball of yarn as well. So I'm almost across here. I'm here at my final chain three, which counts as a stitch, so I'm going to work into the top of that stitch. Now here I want to change color, so I'm going to yarn over and drop a loop like I normally would, and then I'm going to drop that color A. I'm now going to pick up my color B, place my color B on my hook, and draw it through the two loops completing the stitch. I'm now all set to work now using my color B. At this point you can fasten off the color A or uh, depending on the type of edging you might want to keep it attached and just pull it up as you go or uh, it's up to you depending on the project. So once you uh, have your color B attached there you're going to chain three and turn your work. We're now going to work uh, a row similar to our row one we're going to work one double crochet in our new color into each of the next four stitches. Chain 10. Slip stitch down into the top or into the base of that chain and the top of the stitch. And then work one double crochet in each of the next five stitches. You're going to repeat that all the way across. Chain one and turn your work. At the end of your row three, you're chaining one and turning your work. You're then going to, just as you did for row two, work a single crochet into each stitch all the way across, just making sure that each time you come to your loop, you're pushing it forward to the same side of the fabric as all the rest of them, and then you're 
working into that stitch. You always want to have the same number of stitches. So continue to single crochet across. When you come to this end, uh, to the end of the row, if you would like, once more, you can uh, change to a new color and uh, chain three. I'm working my final stitch here and I'm going to switch to a new color, color C, pull it through, chain three, and turn your work. Now for the rest of the pattern, as long as you'd like, you're going to repeat those last two rounds. So the uh, rows, sorry, the row with your loop stitches here, followed by a row of single crochet stitches. And then once you are done, you can meet me back here and I'm going to show you how to join these loops to make our Jacob's Ladder. Once you have worked your loop stitches for as long as you would like, you are going to make one final row. So I've ended on a single crochet row here. And I'm then going to uh, work one more row of double crochet stitches. So I'm going to switch colors, chain three, which counts as a stitch, and then I'm going to work a row of double crochet stitches. There will be no chain tens at the top. I'm just working a simple row of double crochet in each stitch all the way across. Now when you come to the end you can chain one and turn your work uh, but uh, actually just chain one and uh, do not fasten off yet as we are not quite finished. So go ahead work your one final row of double crochet stitches and then meet me back here. Once you have worked your fabric to the desired length, you'll have something that looks like this. You may have woven in your ends uh, that you have down here and uh, then you'll have this fabric with these loops here kind of sitting on top. We now want to uh, you'll still have, you won't have fastened off this yarn over here. It's still attached on your final double crochet row. So now what we're going to want to do is we're going to link these loops and kind of make this chain or this braid lay flat across our fabric. So you can either use your crochet hook or your fingers if you'd like. It's up to you. But what you're going to do is through that bottom loop, starting at the bottom, you're going to insert your hook, grab a hold of the loop above it, so my color B here, and then you're just going to pull it through like you would a chain stitch, like so. You're then going to reach up and reach up and grab that next loop and pull it through the one down below like so. You're going to do that all the way up your fabric. When you come to the top you're just going to leave it, let go, and uh, just move on to the next chain. So same thing starting at the bottom, reach through with your finger or your hook, grab that next loop up and pull it through. Do the same with the next one and pull it through all the way up. I'm going to continue on to the next one, starting at the bottom loop, reach through, grab a hold your next loop, pull it through all the way up. Once you have done that for all of the loops all the way across, you're going to need to anchor these top loops. So at this time, once you've worked it all the way up, you're going to put your crochet back onto your hook, chain one, and turn your work. You're now going to work one final row of single crochet stitches. However, as you reach your loops here on the opposite side, you're going to also work into that loop and kind of pick it up. So we're going to work a single crochet into each of the first four stitches here. So there's one, two, three, four. When you reach your fifth stitch, you're going to insert your hook, catch a hold, insert it through that loop, 
chain loop, then complete your stitch. Yarn over, pull through, complete your stitch. So you're not going to see anything on this side, but when you flip it over, you're going to see that you've grabbed a hold of that loop. We're going to continue across. So single crochet into each of the next four stitches. When you come to that fifth stitch, insert your hook, grab a hold of that chain loop, and work your stitch. Single crochet in each of the next four stitches. On the next stitch, insert your hook, insert it through that loop, yarn over, pull through, and then single crochet into your final five stitches. There we go. At this time, you can fasten off, turn your work, and take a look and your Jacob's Ladder Stitch is complete. And that's all there is to working this fun textured Jacob's Ladder Stitch. Thank you so much for joining me. Once again I invite you to subscribe and take a look around and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Until then, happy crocheting! Bye! Mm -hmm.